And Warren Johnson and Larry Morgan come to the line now. Warren Johnson's having a good weekend. He needs to because look at the way these points in pro stocks sort out down around 10th place, currently occupied by the professor. And Johnny Gray already ran, picked up 20 points, so Warren obviously would like to get this win, and he has a very good race car this weekend. Number three qualifier, he made that run in the first session, came back in the second session, was the second quickest car then, so he's making consistent runs. I think he's getting a little more serious about just going down the racetrack and not experimenting so much. Let's go out there and try to win some rounds. 56th time that these two have faced one another. had Van drop the line, but he missed on the setup. Boy, look at, oh. man, was he driving oh. that thing or what? 203.58 to his 672. He got you, man. Wow. I thought Warren was going to have to push the clutch in on that one. But Warren Johnson, we've seen him do this before. Not many drivers can do this. I don't care what anybody says. This old guy, can he can drive that race car. He started really moving around. When he let the clutch pedal out, it was spinning the tires big time. He got down track like when he put it fourth or fifth gear. That thing kind of made a little move, and he just kept on legging it. And at the line, it's Mike Edwards and Justin Humphreys. And Dave Reef has Ashley Force. Disappointment as expected over here in the team, but Ashley, despite everything, you got to be pretty proud of what this team was able to accomplish. I am. These guys have had a really long 24 hours, and they've worked their butts off, and this wasn't how we wanted our day to go. Um, we were so pumped when we won, especially with so much unknown with this car, how exactly it was going to do to have it, you know, to, have, to be underway to not get, you know, not get to go to the next round. So we'll just, you know, we know what happened. We know how we can fix it and we'll take this wisdom and try to turn it into a positive as much as it stinks today. We we know that's part of drag racing and it is in the fine, you know, the tiniest details that can get you. So we'll, we'll take this, we learn from it and, and we'll just get out there and not make this mistake again. Well, you saw the gang come over the wall and Rick Stewart, he's checking the track again. They've had so much rain here that it kind of bubbles up through the surface and that can be a problem. So we've got a slight pause here, a chance to get caught up as Mike Edwards and Justin Humphreys wait at the line. What our latest songs are and what our latest problem is because there is water percolating up through the surface of the track in a couple of places, and that's causing us some problems, Mike. Uh, yeah, I've definitely got some seepage now that the sun comes out and uh, brings that water up, and as you can see right there, you just cannot run on a racetrack when you got uh, moisture on it. And, of course, part of that is from the uh, rain that came in uh, in the past two days, and this was earlier. Now, watch on the right side of your screen, Warren Johnson. Johnson got a big time sideways, was able to hang on to it, even made a move when he pulled the chutes down uh, track, and he was on he was on a little bit of a ride there. And when he got out, he was boiling. He was upset about the fact that it uh, it got loose from him. And Jason Line back at the starting line, he was upset. And what is it all about? Well, Gary Gerald tracked down Warren Johnson. You saw Warren Johnson making that pass and near the finish line, the car skating on what appeared to be moisture on the racetrack. Obviously, Warren and his team not happy at all. Can you clarify or tell us what's going on here, WJ? Well, this has been a, a long time problem and it's probably manifested itself worse in the last few years, simply from the fact that NHRA as a sanctioning body hasn't been paying due diligence to what they should be doing instead of just scalping the spectators. What's happened is the fact that they didn't slow those fuel cars down five or ten years ago as they should have by having a tech com uh, committee that was, you know, cognizant of what was going on. If they would have slowed them down, the tracks would have to be spending four and five hundred thousand dollars just for shot off areas for only 32 cars in the whole country. Less than one tenth of one percent of all the drag race cars in this country are going to ruin this sport. What needs to be done is they need to slow them cars down beforehand, not after, so the tracks have to spend all the money fixing shutdown areas instead of fixing the racetrack for the rest of the uh, competitors, the 99.9%. .9%. Do you have any voice or any form that you can express these uh, feelings to and, and perhaps get something in progress that will help the situation? Well, I'm sure after uh, this... Uh 
telecast, there's going to be uh, some dialogue between me and, or in fact, all of the competitors with the exception of the fuel cars and NHRA because it's, it's something that needs to be addressed before somebody gets killed out there. Yeah, I mean, Scott Coletta's death was one, one of those unfortunate things and a number of fuel car guys that have died out. We don't need that. But at the same time, there's other competitors out here that are going to probably be in trouble in mid-track, not at the finish line. Give us specifically what the problem is as far as this racetrack or this today's event. This racetrack, as it is on a number of racetrack when we have these conditions, is that water starts percolating up through the race surface. You've got two areas on this track, similar to what Norwalk had, that are higher than the racetrack. There's two uh, areas of... Uh, ground that are higher than the racetrack and what happens is that stuff doesn't run uphill it runs downhill sun comes up warms it up it percolates up through the racetrack and you've got moisture on the track it's simple thanks so mike what he's additionally saying is the money might have been spent on stopping that well i think you got to do both myself i mean you got to take care of obviously the fuel cars keep them safe but he's also right you got to keep the pro stock cars safe also and he's probably pretty upset too because they had a similar situation first round atlanta <clears throat> Excuse me, when him and Johnny Gray both got completely sideways, Warren just basically did a better job of not crashing, got the round win. So he, he's understandably upset about it. And so the decision has been made that they will bring back top fuel, which is what's on the line right now.